Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Uh, this is part two out of 18 uh, coming videos where I break down the different legions in the Liber Astartes and Liber Hereticus for Warhammer the Horus Heresy. So, go behind these videos, help you make up your mind what legion you want to do, give you some idea on what models you might want to buy, and what the focus for each of them is going to be. So, we are on to Legion 2 here, which is the White Scars, the 5th Legion. Uh, we're not going in Legion order, we're going in book order here. Um, <clears throat> and that's going to mean that, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're jumping in and going through this book, uh, and then we'll go through all the Libra Hereticus stuff as well. So, Loyalist Legions first, in order, we've uh, done the Dark Angels, now it's the White Scars. Uh, and this is a, yeah, this is a, a, a fast, speedy, of course, um, Legion focusing on bikes and cavalry and mounted warfare. And of course, their rules are going to also reflect that. Now, uh, the other thing you might want to know about this when we get to the color section here, you're going to be painting a lot of white. <laughs> there's, a, there's a significant amount of, um, of like, uh, sort of, uh, I guess, like clean painting you'll want to do. And it's nicely contrasted red. But there is some other units too that have some different sort of color schemes. Uh, so what do we got here? Well, let's look at all the keyword abilities that you gain. So for the Legions of Stories, the White Scars, Swift of Action. All models with this special rule add a plus one of their movement characteristic whenever called upon to make a roll to determine which player will take the first turn and seize the initiative. The controlling player of an army whose primary detachment has a special rule may roll an additional dice and discard the lowest dice rolled before determining the result. So all your Space Marines move eight. Base movement eight. Now that's important because uh, base movement of eight means you have plus one to your charge rolls as well. Remember in Horus Heresy, your charge is a 2d6 and there's movement uh, bonuses and penalties. It also means your heavier units, like your um, your big terminators, like your cataphracty, you're going to be movement seven. Your uh, Tartarus terminators will be movement eight as well, so they'll also get plus one to charge. There's a lot of subtle sort of like bonuses to having that movement buff. Being able to roll two dice, pick the best for turn order and in, uh, seize the initiative is a huge deal as well, obviously. Um, Chigorian Panoply, you can buy their equipment. Lords of the Storm, you can buy their um, Centurion upgrades. And then Sons of Chigora, so you can take their Warlord trait. Their advanced reaction is Chasing the Wind. Uh, remember, advanced reactions are once per game. This advanced reaction may be used once per battle during the opposing player's movement phase when an enemy unit ends a move with any of its models within 12 inches of any model in a friendly unit under the reactive player's control with the White Scar Special Rule. Once the enemy move that triggers this reaction is completely resolved, all friendly units composed entirely of models with the White Scar Special Rule within 12 of the enemy unit uh, immediately make a normal move. Such units may choose to activate jump packs to increase their movement, but may not choose to run. This move is subject to the normal penalties for difficult terrain, dangerous terrain, and units that are pinned or locked in combat can't use it. So it's basically like a withdraw or advance, except everybody does it, not just one unit. So once per game, you can either scatter or all push in every unit within 12. That can be a game-changing thing. Imagine pushing onto every objective or pushing deeper on every objective, and it's any direction. It's not like, it's not an advance or withdraw where it's, it's basically dictated by which one you choose. These guys just go where they want. So, huge deal. Um, a very power, like, subtle but powerful reaction, especially when you're trying to hold zones or be in table quarters and stuff like that. All right, your roller trades. Heroes never die. They don't. Heroes live forever in the memories of their friends. Um, so you can only take a loyalist uh, uh, warlord with this trait, and all warlords with this trait. Uh, sorry, a warlord with this trait, and all models in any unit that he join gain stubborn. Furthermore, if the warlord is moved as a casualty, all models in any friendly unit composed entirely of white scars, uh, from which one of more models can draw line of sight to the warlord at the point at which he's moved as a casualty, gain fearless for the rest of the battle. In addition, an army's warlord that has this trait can make an additional reaction in the opponent's assault phase, as long as they're still alive. So basically, if your hero, if your warlord dies, whoever sees him becomes fearless for the rest of the game, because they're just so mad that he's a hero, basically. Um, that's, <laughs> that could be, I mean, it's funny, until you've played Horus Heresy, you're probably not going to understand how crippling morale rolls can be in this game, because it's not like in 9th edition 40k, where you fail one, one guy runs away, and a few more might. If you get run down in assault, everyone's dead. Like your 20-man Space Marine squad that just fell back and gets chased down in an off initiative roll just gets butchered as they turn around to run. It's a very different cruel time in 40k. So all of a sudden having a whole bunch of people become fearless is a massive deal. Uh, Born of the Saddle, this warlord and all models in the army with the White Scar Special Rule and the Cavalry type ignore all the effects of difficult terrain and gain a 4-plus invulnerable save against wounds made by a dangerous terrain test. 
That's so basically your warlord and his like outriders all become extra good at riding their bikes. In addition, um, an army whose warlord has this trait can make additional reaction to the enemy's movement phase. So if you're gonna do your bike army, Born of the Saddle is probably the one you want to take. Although Heroes Never Die is kind of amazing. But then the Forgotten Sons, there were traitors in the White Scar ranks. There's a whole bit in the Horse Heresy novels that uh, basically have Jagatai Khan like struggling with this. Uh, you can only take this Viewer of Traitor Allegiance. If an, it's funny that the Dark Angels didn't have one of those. That was neat, eh? That's kind of weird. Kind of kind of says something, doesn't it? Maybe the Dark Angels weren't so bad. Um, <laughs> so this Royal Trait will be selected by a model with the Traitor Allegiance. If an army whose world has this trait includes an ally detachment with the Sons of Horus special rule, the Warlord in any unit he joins automatically pass any morale test or pinning test they're called upon to make. So it's kind of like an army of renown. You're basically taking the army from the novels where the Sons of Horus are hanging out with these guys. Um, and any unit he joins automatically pass any morale or pinning test they're called upon to make with it any dice being rolled as long as at least one friendly unit with the uh, Sons of Horus special rule can draw line of sight to the Warlord in his unit. In addition, the Warlord in any unit he's joined may make a Death Dealer's reaction um, from the advanced reactions in Libra Hereticus which is the <clears throat> Sons of Horus reaction without uh, expending a point from the controlling player's reaction allotment. And counting all models um, having the White Scar special rule as if they had the Sons of Horus special rule. So basically, <clears throat> you become like a baby uh, Sons of Horus allied, to, or uh, like the army for a turn, um, and you have to kind of take a allied detachment of Sons of Horus. So I love that that's in there. Come on. Like the, the fact that the books are reflecting the rules here. It's the first time, I think, going through this, you'll see that be the case, but it's not the last time, and I, I think that's a really neat add. Um, it's a very specific theme, but I think that's cool. All right, so Rites of War, so different ways that you can take, far, far less than the, the Dark Ages, but there's six. There's only two for the White Scars. But these are special ways that you can take your, um, your army. So Chagorian Brotherhood, so Legion Skyhunter Squadrons and Outrider Squadrons can be taken as troops and gain the line subtype. So there you go. So even unlike the Ravenwing, where you didn't get line, this is the true bike army, right? You can actually score objectives with your um, Sky Hunters and your jet bikes basically in your bikes. Uh, Legion Sky Hunter Squadrons and Outrider Squadrons can also be taken as elites, um, but they don't get the line subtypes, so you can just fill out your whole force org if you want with bikes. And then all models of the infantry unit type uh, in a detachment using this right of war gain the outflank special rule. I'm really hoping we get plastics for those bikes because I think that would be a sight to see, uh, and I mean, the models from Forge World are amazing. Having plastic bikes would be rad. Uh, limitations, and any uh, unit made up entirely of models of the infantry unit type in an attachment with this right of war that does not begin embarked on a transport or any model of the vehicle subtype without the transport or fast subtypes must begin in reserve. Attachment using this right of war may not include any heavy support or fortifications unless the choices are composed of models of the flyer subtype. So basically, you're taking light stuff, you're taking fast stuff. All right, and then right of war, the Sigurian Maison, uh, Eben Keshig cohorts, which are uh, coming up later, may be taken as troop choices and attachment using this right of war. All units composed entirely of models of this infantry unit subtype in this detachment using the right of war uh, must be given both the Karash and the Feel No Pain special rules. All models with both of the Legions of Stardis, White Scars, and Karash special rule in this detachment using this right of war gain the Fearless special rule for the duration of any assault phase in which they make it a, a charge. So basically you're taking, I'll just show you, I'll give you, I'll give you a little preview of what that means. Uh, uh, Golden Keshig and Eben Keshig. So these cohorts, um, this is like jet bikers and these guys have, the Eben Keshig are basically the Tartarus Terminators. So for 200 points, you get Tartarus Terminator squads. They've also included the movement increases in the stat line here, so you don't have to, to worry about them. So you're taking a big Tartarus Terminator like, like unit, and they're all gonna get Feel No Pain 5 plus, but they get a five plus wound shrug, which is amazing because they have two wounds too, right? So they become super tough. Um, and uh, yeah, and the Karash special rule is on page 185, which is this right here. No enemy player may ever score any victory points from the destruction of a unit with this special rule, regardless of the scenario being played or any victory conditions in effect. So Blood Feud, you get nothing for these guys. In addition, a model with this special rule may not join any unit that's not composed entirely of models that also have the Karash special rule, nor any models that uh, does not have the Karash special rule join a unit that includes any models with this special rule. So basically, they were like... They're almost like troll slayers in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, like they're atoning for something, but they're wicked tough, and they become fearless when they charge. Uh, your limitation is an army in which the, any detachment using this right of war may not choose uh, to place any units in a reserve, and as such is unable to perform deep strike assaults, subterranean assault, or flanking assaults. So you're starting on, on the table, basically. 
An attachment using this right award uh, may not include any heavy support that are not composed entirely of models of the infantry unit subtype or any fortification or primark choices regardless of unit type. So you can't take Jagatai because he's not going to hang out with the, the guys atoning. All right, so your army of uh, the White Scars, you can get a Legion Sham Shear jet bike. Uh, so it's a variant of the Scimitar jet bike. Um, so any White Scars, uh, Legion Series White Scars, and independent character special rules, but not unique subtype, may exchange their Scimitar for a Legion Sham Shear jet bike at no additional point cost. So basically all of your jet bikes become these for free. Um, and it, uh, sorry, a Legion Shamshir Jet Bike has one Scatterbolt Launcher, which is down here. It's a template, Strength 5, AP 4, Assault 1, Shred Pinning. So basically you get these like bolt weapons, but they're kind of like, like shotguns, like short range shotguns. Um, in addition, a model with the Legion Shamshir Jet Bike that chooses to run gains the Shrouded 5 plus special rule until the start of the next uh, player's phase. So you're going to get a 5 plus wound shrug against everything, basically, that's shooting. Um, when you make a run. A model with the infantry unit type, and sorry, that is Assault 1, remember. So you can run and fire assault weapons. So that thing is real good. And you didn't even roll a hit, because it's a template. A model with the infantry unit type that selects the Legion Shampshire Jet Bike. As an upgrade, must change this unit type to Cavalry Anti-Grav, keeping any other subtypes they already have. Change its movement characteristic to 15 inches, which includes the Legion of Studies White Scars rule. Um, and gains Firing Protocols 2 and Hammer Wrath 1, and improves its armor save to 2+, plus if it was worth than that. Uh, so your Power Glaive, uh, it's uh, basically an upgrade for a power weapon. It's a plus one strength, AP3, melee, and breaching 5+, plus, so it can, on a roll to wound of 5+, plus, go to AP2. And then a Cyberhawk. <laughs> Sounds like this is an 80s uh, cartoon. Uh, any model with the Legion of Strikes, White Scars, and Independent Press Character Special Rule can take a Cyberhawk for 10 points, uh, as long as they're not unique. And at the start of any turn in which the controlling player is the active player, a model with a Cyberhawk, um, may select one enemy unit with at least one model within 24. When making shooting attacks against that unit, the model of the Cyberhawk and all models in any unit they've joined may reroll fail all failed to hit rolls of one. And when declaring a charge targeting the chosen unit, the model of the Cyberhawk and any unit they've joined add plus one to the charge roll. So you're plus two to charge now because you're moving eight, basically, with almost all the units in your army. You're not going to take Cataphracty in a White Scars army. Um, the jet bikes are like plus four. <laughs> <laughs> like they're moving 15, you're like plus three and then plus four for just this <laughs> if you have a cyberhawk. Yeah, you are uh, you are long bombing some charges for sure. Your average charge roll becomes 11 inches. Um, and yeah, and the, just the rerolls the shoot's amazing too. And then your Consularis, a Storm Seer, so you get a Psyker as your Consularis for 45 points. Um, so a Centurion, Tartarus Centurion, or Cataphracty Centurion can take those upgrades. Um, and then gain the following special rules. You gain the Psyker subtype and must select one of the following Psychic Disciplines, Storm's Fury, which is down here, Divination, Telepathy, or Thaumaturgy, um, and you gain the Adamantine Will 4 plus special rules. You can dispel stuff. Uh, you may replace your Power Weapon, Bolt Pistol, or Combi Weapon with a Force Weapon for no points, and you may take a Psychic Code for 15 points. Um, so your Storm's Fury, you get to do the Unseen Bolt, range 72, because you're calling lightning down. You're basically Thor's hammering out of the sky. Strength 4, AP 4, Heavy 1, Large Blast 5, Barrage, Shock Pulse, and Force. So against Demons, it's Force, which means no, none of their Demon save. Um, I think it auto-wounds, too. Um, and then Shock Pulse is the minus 1 um, bliss or weapon skill. It's only Shock Pulse blank, so it's 1. Uh, and then the Call of the Wind, instead of moving in the movement phase, a unit with the Psychic Power may gain the Fleet 2 Special Rule to all... Uh, sorry, grant the Fleet 2 Special Rule to all friendly units with at least one model within 6. And this special rule lasts until the beginning of the control player's next turn. When using this power, the controlling player may choose to have the psychic, um, psychic make a psychic chest, and if they pass, they get to fleet four. Um, but they might suffer perils of the warp. All right, so we're into the big boy himself, Jagatai Khan. Uh, he's the 440 point Primarch of the White Scars. He is zippy fast. Uh, you can take a mounted ore on foot. Now, I don't think there's a mounted model for him. You'd have to get creative and convert him, but it would be wicked cool if there was. Um, and, uh, yeah, him a foot is basically movement 9, so very fast. Weapon skill 7, bliss skill 7. Only strength toughness 6, though. He's not quite as strong as some of his brothers. Weapon skill 6. Initiative 8, though. He is fast with 6 attacks, leadership 10, and a 2 plus save. Um, so, yeah, so you're looking at 8, like... Second only to like the jump pack friends and winged sanguineous, this guy is crazy fast. If you put him on a bike, super crazy fast. If he takes his Sojutsu Batter and Void bike, he's plus 25 points because movement 18 um, and gets an extra wound as well. Uh, so his uh, stuff, of course, he's got Storm's Voice, the White Tiger Dao, the Wildfire Panoply, and Frag Grenades. 
So the White Tiger Dao is plus one strength, so he's strength seven, AP two, melee, duelist edge one, so he's initiative nine in, in melee. Furious Charge 2, so 2 extra attacks, uh, Murder Strike 5 plus and Master Crafted, so he's, he's rocking maybe 9 attacks, and if he's going to challenge, he'd be 9 attacks, initiative 9, he's going before everybody. But it's not brutal or anything, so you're just doing single wounds whenever you uh, wound somebody, unless you get that Murderous Strike off, in which case you are, of course, um, instant death. Uh, so we got Storm's Voice, uh, it's his gun, range 12, strength 6, AP 4, pistol 2, rending 5+, plus, deflagrate, concussion 1, and master crafted. So again, some some nice, oh no, I got that wrong earlier. Concussion is what reduces your weapon skill. Um, shock Pulse is if you, uh, if you, I think is the one, if you break through, you do additional damage to vehicles. Um, and then his uh, Wildfire Panoply, uh, he's a uh, 2 plus armor, 4 plus invul, and during the shooting phase, a 3 plus armor during both the movement and assault phase. So... 4 plus invul for shooting, but then 3 plus invul for movement and assault is, is a neat change, because whenever he's moving, basically he's like a blur. Uh, lightning from the blue skies. When held in reserve, this is a special rule, do not roll for Dragon Dicon or any of he's considered to be part of. Instead, at the beginning of any of the controlling player's turns except the first, he just shows up. <laughs> no roll necessary. He, he always knows when to be there. Uh, if he's part of a flanking assault, then the rule applies to all units that are part of that flanking assault, but does not apply to any deep strikes. So basically, if he's out flanking, he's just like, yep, yeah, this is when we showed up. We're here. And if you want to take his um, Sojutsu Pattern Void Bike, he's got two Mastercraft Heavy Bolters, Hammer Wrath 2, and Fire Protocols 3, the Anti-Grav subtype, um, and when upgraded, he can fall back 3d6 instead of 2d6. He has Hit and Run, which is a big deal. He also has Crusader. Uh, and when upgraded, to have a Sojutsu Pattern Void Bike, which means he uh, rolls two dice, picks the highest for sweeping advances. <laughs> Initiative 8. Um... And when upgraded to have a Sojutsu Pattern Void Bike, you can join any unit uh, that includes models with the Cavalry Unit subtype, uh, despite any usual restrictions and any rules that apply to that are considered to um, affect Jack and Tycon as if he had their unit type. So, two Mastercrafted Heavy Bolters, plus he's got the Storm's Voice, so he's shooting a lot of guns. And then his Sire of the White Scars rule, all infantry and cavalry models with the uh, White Scars special rule in the same army as Jagged Icon, including Jagged Icon, gain the Furious Charge uh, 1 special rule on any turn in which they've moved. In addition, an army with Jagged Icon as its warlord may make an additional reaction in the movement phase, as long as he's still alive. And yeah, so he's he is crazy fast. He's actually a really good duelist. So with his high initiative, murder strike five plus. Unless you're uh, fighting other Primarchs, he will pretty much cut down anybody in a challenge. Right? He's going to go in at initiative nine, go first, reroll everything with uh, reroll re Master Crafted. Sorry, have nine attacks at strength seven, murder strike, and duelist edge. So. Yeah, the White Tiger Dao is pretty great in melee. Uh, plus, he's gonna maybe run you over with Hammer Wrath too if he's on a jet bike. So yeah, don't 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 try and fight him with like your sergeant a challenge. He will make an example of that guy. <laughs> All right, so on to the units: the Golden Keshig Squadron and the Abid Keshig Cohort. So these are the two basically like uh, sides of a coin. The Golden Keshig are the guys who are the most prestigious. The Abid ones are the guys who've like disgraced themselves. So for the Golden Keshig, they're all getting a ride. They're on their jet bike still. Uh, Artificer armor, chainsaws, bow pistols, and a Kantos power lance. Strength 10, power up, an AP1 melee, ungainly lance, brutal 3, sudden strike 4, two-handed. 3 damage in melee. Uh, these guys can even jack up a Primark with that damage 3. They only have one attack, though. Uh, but sudden strike 4 and two-handed, which means they're high, high initiative on the charge. Um, and, of course, they have lance which means they reduce armor higher than 12 to 12, uh, which means they're very good at killing uh, vehicles as well. So, uh, yeah, you've got your anti-grav stuff. Your weapon skill 5, basically 2 wounds, 1 attack, 2 plus save. Uh, you're all riding around a cavalry. Hit and run, relentless, and hammer wrath 1. And you can take up to 3 extra guys for 40 points each. Uh, they can exchange the chainsword for power weapons and turnable weapons too, which means you don't have to use the lance all the time, which is nice. And you can take a Vexilla, and your sergeant can take a thunder hammer as well. And then we already talked about the Ebon Keshig, the Tar Tartarus Terminators, uh, with Power Glaives. So they have Power Glaives. Um, so they're basically melee dudes, uh, but they do have Relentless, Bulky 2, Crash, Stubborn, and Feel No Pain 5+. Plus. They can take a Combi, Bolter, and Power Weapon instead of their Glaives, or a Combi, Bolter, and Power Fist. And they can take um, Combi Weapons as well, and a Vexilla and a Grenade Harness. All right, and then the assault speeders. I do. I love the fact that speeders got their armor value taken away, so they don't degrade. They can't be immobilized. They just become tough guys. Uh, this is kind of a heavy speeder, tough to seven, four wounds. Um, it's 15-inch move. Got two attacks. Of course, two guys riding it. 
It's got a um, bolt pistol, chain swords, power armor, and then the Kaizagan class assault speeder. It has a carries assault cannon and two Reaper auto cannons, so tons of guns. You can take up to two more in the squadron for 105 points, and you can take up to 200 killer missiles for five points each. So, very cool speeders. <clears throat> Remember, you're gaining a bunch because you're cavalry, I think. Uh, yeah, you're cavalry. You're gaining all the cavalry bonuses for being white scars as well. And carries assault cannons are legit, as are Reaper auto cannons. And then you have chin. chin no, wait. <clears throat> I'm going to try it. Kin Cha? I think it's Cha for. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Zaw, no, maybe Zaw with an X. Maybe Chin Zaw. Master of the Keshig, Chosen of the Kagan. Uh, 220 points. This is your, like, Super Praetor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Weapon skill 6. Blitz skill 4. Strength 4. Toughness 4. 4 wounds. He's, like, a Super Praetor. 5 attacks. Kind of standard for the big Praetors. Um, he's got Tartarus Armor, Iron Halo, Grenade Harness, and the Tales of the Dragon. Um, it's a two separate but identical weapons, and you get to take the bonus for two melee weapons. For um, But it's already been included in his profile. <clears throat> you can pair them, uh, and you can split the mountain and hit hard when you attack for strength plus three, AP two, melee unwieldy and master crafted. Uh, part the horse's mane for plus one strength two, melee precision strike three plus and master crafted. So basically, you can do lighter attacks that go fast, or heavy attacks that are slower, and you can split your attacks over the course of a combat. So you can do like two attacks hit hitting heavy and three attacks going a different initiative, which means you'll fight in different bands. Oh no, you can't do that actually. Sorry, that's so it's funny. I thought that he that I thought he had the weapon master rule. He doesn't have the weapon master rule. He has to he has to actually pick one of those things for the whole profile. Uh, 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 Dynat from the Alpha Legion has almost the same kind of weapon, but he can actually divide his attacks up between a thunder hammer and a uh, melee weapon. Guess you're not quite as good as Dynat there. Um, he's got um, Master Legion counterattack two, furious charge one. So if you charge him, he gets two attacks. If he charges you, he gets plus one extra. So two attacks as well, basically. Bulky 2, Relentless, Stubborn, Master of the Keshig, and he's Chosen and Loyalist. So, um, Chosen the Kagan, if he's your Warlord, once per battle, the controlling player may choose to either bring an eligible friendly unit or a group of friendly units assigned to a Deep Strike or Flanking Assault into play automatically. In addition, an army whose Warlord has this trait can make an additional reaction during the Assault phase. Um, and he, if he's selected as leader of your uh, Legion Tartarus Command Squad, any model can take a Power Glaive for 5 points, which is nice too. So, cool Terminator Leader. And that's it. That's your other character, basically. Uh, nice color section. And I really hope that Proteus Powered Land Speeder becomes a plastic miniature, because I love that it's a callback to the old Road Trader uh, Speeder. More color stuff. These are definitely the Forge World ones, but I really wish they were new and cool and plastic. Obviously, lots of cool Forge World stuff, too, including these um, Vigilator console, the Ebon Keshig, which is the Tartarus Guys with Glaives. So the Disgraced guys, and that super cool Kaizaga and Assault Speeder too, and Khan, the Warhawk. I want a model of him on his bike though, I think that would be iconic. So there it is, the White Scars. We're on to the Space Wolves next, the Sons of Ross, which is super cool. Um, I think if you're looking for an army, of course, of bikes and stuff like that, the White Scars can operate, obviously, without using all these special rules, but they really do lean into the cavalry subtype, so you're looking at buying lots of Forge World, at the moment, there may be an option for plastic stuff in the future, um, but do consider that, I think, when you're thinking about all your special rules. To really lean into what they have going on, you're probably dipping into a lot of resin right now. Um, <clears throat> that being said, if they're your favorite Legion, you're going to do what you got to do. Um, and you will definitely have one of the most unique armies on the tabletop right now, because it won't just be leaning into tactical squads and stuff like that. You'll have line bikes and line jet bikes, crazy cool amounts of speeders, um, and be playing a crazy outflanking game that nobody else is kind of playing <laughs> at the moment. So if you're looking for a unique, I think, Legion, the White Scars definitely fit that bill just because of their rights of war. Um, and their ability to like move fast and even their infantry just just purely taking them and, and taking the stuff from the, the Horse RC Age of Darkness core game You're gonna have like big movement bonuses that the other armies don't get like right off the hop So uh, I think that's a, a very different option if you're looking for a unique force These guys fit the bill right away uh, Just leaning into unit types that aren't taken by their armies So we'll be back with um, the Space Wolves Once again, I'm gonna try and power through as many as I can So we'll see how far I get into the 18 uh, Until next time I'm Ash Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. 
click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.